So let us see what are the other estimates of this risk measure. So this we are covering the ch chapter 32.2, the aim statement, the non-parametric approaches. It is referring to the Kevin Dot book, chapter number 4. Okay. So let us see this non-parametric uh, approaches. The first aim statement it says that describe the bootstrap historical simulation method. So please note that we started the class today with the historical simulation method. Okay. We say that that is a non-parametric approach, but giving the same weightage to all the data. Okay. What they are saying is we will adopt a historical simulation, but we will do some enhancement in that historical simulation approach. So, and that, that that first method is your bootstrapping. Okay. What happens in this bootstrapping? Okay. So, what we say is we will create a large number of samples. Okay. So, all we some from the original data set. Okay. So, all the data if it is, it is actually taken from the original data set. So, from the original data set, we create a large number of samples. This large number of samples are actually created by data with replacement. So it, it, let's say if you have, let's say this as the sample. Okay. So from there you will take one value. Okay. And once you have taken that value, you will plug it back and then you will again randomly take some value. It may happen that the next one can come the same value, same data can come the next time. So each of the data is taken and then again replaced. So it is resampling from the original data set and it is with replacement. Okay. So what happens is you will get many of these samples. So you will take many of these samples. So one sample I have taken, let's say, again I have taken one sample. This is sample is like it can composed of many data. Okay. It's like five data, six data. So say your whatever sample size you have taken, make sure you are taking this sample size. That it can be overlap with the previous one. So what you are saying is you would be able to sample many times and you should be what happens is each of this sample we are computing the where from the sample i will i will explain to you okay how that is done but let's first understand this process okay in the book you will find that in the main section they will just they have just highlighted the steps okay the in the appendix they have actually given the the method okay but when you read from the book, it is uh, very much confusing. So just please understand this process when we discuss. Okay. So what happens is you will take the var of all of these samples. So let's say you have taken multiple samples var. Okay. And later on what you can do is you can take, since you have taken the multiple samples, you can take the average of this var. Okay. You can take the average of these vars. Okay. So what happens is average of this var you can say okay so all of this you are saying that okay one var measure I have got. Okay. So like that you can take many var estimates. So var one you will please note that you are computing samples. Okay. You are taking the var from this okay. because you will order the returns and you will be able to take the var. So this is one var you have taken. Similarly you can take another var. You can take another var like that you will take multiple of vars right. So what you can do is you can take the average of these vars and you can compute the expected shortfall. Right? This you are computing let's say at 96%, the 4 bot percent bottom. This you are computing at let's say 97%, right? Then you can take the average and you can compute this expected shortfall. Right? What is the benefit of this bootstrapping is this method gives you a much better result as compared to the normal historical simulation that we did. The normal historical simulation, the historical simulation on the raw data, that is you just took the raw data, you just took the raw data and you ordered that, right? So you will get a much better approach in this case of historical simulation, right? Now let us understand exactly what is done in historical simulation. Okay. So let's say suppose you have your portfolio Typically, you will use this in your portfolio also. So let's say you have a portfolio asset 1, asset 2, asset 3. These are the three assets in your portfolio. Let's say you have found out the value of the price. Okay. You will compute the price on D1, D2, D3, D4 on various days. You will be able to compute the price. Let's say price is X1, X2, X3, X4. 
let's say y1 y2 y3 y4 okay z1 z2 z3 z4 right so what happens is typically okay we get actually we try to get a index data from here okay how do you get the index data you will consider this as your starting point okay so what you will say is i will try to create a index data please note that this index data is actually another way to get your actual return okay think about it what you do over here is a1 what you will compute is x2 divided by x1 take example this is 40 and this is 20 so what we'll have is x2 by x1 is 2 or i can say this x2 by x1 is 2 or i can say it is 1 dot x can i say 1 dot x wherein i am saying there's 1 plus x where x is my 100 percent right this has given a 100 percent return right or if you so here x is your one okay but let's say if x1 is 20 and x2 is 24 so what you have is 1.2 right so it has given 20 percent return okay so your indexing will give you the actual return values so just trying to put these values in the excel so bootstrapping what we will do is okay we'll have a1 a2 a3 okay we have this is the d1 d2 d3 d4 okay let's say we put some random values okay so random values we'll take okay just random the price is between 0 to let's assume 40 okay just i am taking some random value over here Now I have just randomized this data, right? So what I can take is I can get the index also, right? So I will say that, okay, what is the return that you have produced in D2, D3, D4? D2, the return would be this divided by this, okay? So what you have is this is the return that you have got, right? So similarly, you can uh, get this, let's say we, this is got, let's say we put it 50, right? So you have got all of these as some price point okay similarly you can get this over okay either you can put a like a referencing point but typically it is done over this okay so what you have got is this and this divided by this okay so you what you have got these points are this point this point this point this is actually the return on on d2 as compared to the previous so these are a price point this is a price over this this is a price over this next is i want to do a historical simulation what happens in a simulation see in a simulation what you would want to do is you would say that okay these are the three possible returns dates days possible right so for asset a1 you have got these three days possible i want to randomly select one day out of it okay getting the point I want to select randomly one day out of it. Randomly, it can come any of these things. Let's say, let's say we are trying to say, okay, uh, we are today. Okay, the today, the A1, A2, A3, we are today at T. We want to know what would be the value at T plus one every day. Okay, let's say today the prices are 40, 22, 33. I want to know what will be the price today. Okay. So what I can do is I can say that the price tomorrow would be equal to this into any of this. Right? So what will happen is like either this or this or this. How do I find out? Okay. So what I will say is I will do a random. Okay. I want to do a random between one and three. Okay. So sometimes I will get one. I sometimes I will get one, two, three. I will. I can. I do not know what I will get. So I can choose that one. So what I will do is, okay, I will, okay, okay, let's say if it comes as one, two, so we'll see this three will put, okay, so all of these are random, okay, see all of this will be randomly changing, no, not necessarily all will be same, all will be different, right, so when it comes as two, we'll say it will be 
a2 right so will be st string concatenate concatenate okay your text it will be c comma this so we have got c3 value will select we have similarly we will do the concatenation only thing is we have to get yeah c no no we have to select c d okay sorry mm, it would have been better if you had taken the returns like this actually okay let's see d1 d2 d3 a1 a2 a3 so we are saying that the return over d1 will be equal to this this d2 will be equal to this divided by this and this will be equal to this divided by this this will be equal to this divided by this just like it's I am just uh, solving for the first time. I thought that I will create it before the class. I could not. Right, so this is the various uh, return you have got. Now what we are saying is if it comes it will be your concatenation will be D here the concatenation will be E. So what we are saying is we have to sometimes refer to C3 sometimes to D3 sometimes to E2. Right? So we will say okay this price will be equal to okay, this into I am not sure that if you if you how do you value how do you reference so there is some way of referencing the cell i'm not sure how to be done 